So it's a new year, and with a new year of course comes new videos. And this year I want to do something different. So I recently joined Amino, and no, this isn't a sponsored video in any way. And in the Star Wars group of this app, I've recently started asking questions to see the overall response of the community. For example, I put the question out recently, what faction would you side with in the Civil War? It was only a 24 hour poll, but surprisingly, after all the wrongs the Empire have done, 43% of you wanted to stick with the Empire, 37% sided with the Rebellion, and 20% wanted to live their lives in peace and harmony on the safe planet of Alderaan. That's not going to get destroyed at all. So if you want to join in on the discussion, you can join me on either Amino or follow me on Twitter where I'll be posting the same questions for you to answer. So why not join in and get voting? However, today's video doesn't have to do with a question. This is more a discussion, a very strong theory currently going around in the community. I am of course talking about the planet Ilum being very closely related to Starkiller Base. How close in fact? Well... He's me, and I'm you. You see, Ilum is a planet very important in the world of Star Wars, mainly because in Legends, and now in official canon for Star Wars via the Clone Wars, the Book of Soka, and now Fallen Order, Ilum is the ice-covered world where Jedi for thousands of years have been going there to find their crystals to make their very own lightsabers. But did you know that Ilum has now been given so much more lore thanks to Ahsoka and Star Wars Fallen Order? Well, in this video, I'm going to look at what evidence we have to support the theory that Ilum is the actual name for Star Killer Base. <laughs> Now I need to clarify before starting this, but this theory is not a new one, as so many people have come to the same conclusion already. My job today is to theorise the possible timeline for what happened between the events of Episode 3 all the way to the events of Episode 7. So here's a quick history of Ilum before we get into this. Located in the unknown regions of space, Ilum is a planet very rich in the Force. It's pretty much one of the only planets where a Jedi can go and get a kyber crystal to power their lightsabers. Masters would take their younglings, or padawans, to go out into the harsh cold weather with only the Force as their guide to lead them straight to their kyber crystal. But of course, after the Great Jedi Purge, the Empire soon moved to the planet's surface, to begin extractions of large amounts of the surface digging down into the planet's core. Thanks to the Book of Soka, we learn this operation started just only a year into the Empire's rule of the galaxy. You see, the kyber crystals extracted from the planet were taken to the Death Star's location, as vast amounts of these crystals would be used to power the planet's super-destroying weapon. It's only when we get to Star Wars Fallen Order we see the full extent of what has happened to the planet's surface. Looking an awful lot like Starkiller Base, if you ask me. Uh, oh, there it is. However, with all the information I've given so far, there still seems to be a lot of people that have been confused, thinking that the Empire, as well as making the Death Star, were also in the process of making Starkiller Base. Well, I can safely say that the answer to this is no. You see, after Order 66, or the Great Jedi Purge, Anakin had completely fallen to the dark side and had now become Darth Vader. The Death Star was already under construction and probably had been for a good few months before the Empire fully seized control. However, needing a power source to power the Death Star's super planet destroying weapon was something the Empire couldn't simply do with the technology that they had. Target Jetta City, prepare single reactor ignition. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. If I push it any harder, the whole thing will blow. They needed something that could handle the amount of power being generated to the battle station. So with Vader's knowledge and the Jedi Archives now fully accessible to the Empire, Ilum was soon found and mining work shortly began. Now one thing to consider here is that kyber crystals are not visible to people who are not strong in the Force. So of course as a result of this, huge chunks of the planet would have had to have been removed as a result. Every large kyber crystal found would have most likely gone straight to the Death Star's construction. Now in my opinion, over the years the mining becomes more intense, as the mining operation becomes more necessary to complete the Death Star as soon as possible. Now you see, I believe as the Death Star becomes closer to completion, the Empire's mining operation begins to slow down. 
However, I believe at no point during this time do the Empire ever consider the idea of turning Ilum into a planet-destroying weapon at this point, as many of the generals do believe that the Death Star is an impenetrable fortress that has absolutely no weakness. Famous last words. Now skipping ahead towards the end of A New Hope, the Emperor would have most likely ordered the planet to be mined even more, as he begins work on the second Death Star to regain control. I think it's pretty safe to say that the planet's mining is intensified ridiculously. Yet of course, as we all know after this, the Empire of course loses the Battle of Endor, and the Emperor is announced dead, according to the generals. The Empire is thrown into chaos, as no one knows what to do. Generals and moths fight for power within the Empire, and all remaining troops stationed on non-important planets, or non-important job roles such as mining off-world or guard duty, are pulled straight into the front lines to back up the Empire's ever-increasing casualty list. So it's at this point, mining on Ilum, in my opinion, would have just completely stopped. Now, of course, as most of us are aware, the Battle of Jakku is the last known battle of the Empire. Of course, the battle was lost, and the Empire, of course, surrendered to the New Republic. However, this is where we get our connection between the two. Because before the Loyalists of the Empire fled to the Unknown Regions, they also stole maps and plans on how to convert a planet into a new super weapon. So I believe at this point the remaining generals would have most likely seen that Ilum had already been mined so much that pretty much the planet would have been easily able to have been converted into this new technology. So after all of this, the last remnants of the Empire then flee to the Unknown Regions to regain their strength. Of course, finding their way to Ilum. So of course, for the next 30 years, the First Order was, in my opinion, able to focus in peace on the completion of the mass superweapon without fear of it being found by the New Republic, seeing as they had no records of the planet's existence, and the galaxy, of course, believed there were no Jedi, so you weren't going to get a surprise Jedi popping up here and there. So of course, this takes us through to Episode 7, where the First Order have now completely converted Ilum into Starkiller Base. Now, other things to support this theory is that Ilum's size has actually been recently changed to 660 kilometers in diameter, which, guess what, is the exact same size as Starkiller Base. Also, in canon, the location of Starkiller Base just so happens to be in the exact same location of Legends Ilum. So, in my opinion, this is a brilliant way of connecting the prequels and the sequels together. But anyway, guys, that is my theory for what I believe transpired between Episode 3 and 7. But what do you guys think? Is this a huge revelation for you, or do you think it's just a very big coincidence? Well, why not let me know down in the comment section down below. Guys, I just want to really take this moment to say I wish you have all had a very happy new year. I'd also like to take this moment as well to thank you all for helping me reach 400 subscribers. I mean, I am seriously over the moon with that. I mean, guys, I cannot tell you just how immensely proud and honoured that I feel to have you guys supporting this channel. But as anyway, guys, if you are new here and you have enjoyed this video, then please why not consider subscribing to the channel. But until next time, guys, I am terrible with outros, and I shall see you all in the next video. But until then, guys, hey, what's that big red beam coming towards us?